In this video, we're going to work with manipulating these summations. In particular, we're going to add or remove terms from them. And doing this will help give you practice in working with these summations. So in this first example, I want to add a term to the end of this summation. Well, number one thing I'm going to tell you, always the first step is expand. So before I do anything else, I'm going to expand this summation to get a feel for how it works. Now notice I'm starting k at 1, so this is going to be 2, 1 plus 1 plus 1. And then the second term will be 2 to the 2 plus 1 plus 1, and so on. And we're going to end with k being n. So 2 to the n plus 1 plus 1. And so this is what our sum looks like. Now we want to add a term to the end of this summation, meaning what would be the next term in this sequence? Well, we stopped at n. And again, remember, n is just some number. Maybe it's 35. So we're going from 1 to 35. So the next number in the sequence would be for 36, index 36. So this would be 2. I'm replacing the n with an n plus 1, n plus 1, plus 1. So notice I'm replacing this n with an n plus 1. That's making it the, the next index. I don't know what n is, but n plus 1 is going to be the next one. Okay, so that's going to be the next term. So if I want to uh, add a term, I can't just say this is plus, because then this side wouldn't be correct. Right. But what I can do is I can write a new summation in, that includes this last term that we just figured out. So we go from k equals 1, but now we're going to n plus 1 of 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1. Now this is going to be our old sum. plus our new term. Like that. So we have added a term, we've added this term to the end of that summation to get a new summation. Um, as pointed out before, we're using an n here not a k. k belongs to the sum. k is, does not exist outside of the sum, right, is the sum variable. Okay, here's another example. We want to add a term to the end of this sum. So again, expand. That's where I always want to start. What I've found in the past is that it's really easy to make mistakes with these. And the students who expand always do the best job. And students who get a little cocky and say, I can do this in my head, it's not a big deal, much more likely to get it wrong. So it's just, it's worth the extra few minutes to just expand it. And you can go from there. So here we're starting i out at zero. So this is zero factorial plus one factorial plus 2 factorial, and we're going all the way up to n plus 1. So I can do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one less. n factorial, and then plus n plus 1 factorial, like that. And so if we want to add a new term to the end of this, we need to figure out what that new term is going to be. So the next term...
will be, well, we went to n plus 1. And again, remember, n is just a number. Maybe it's 100. So n is 100. n plus 1 is 101. So the next number is going to be 102. But again, I cannot just add that in. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, a new sum. Right, because if I, if I put a plus here, now what I'm saying is this right-hand side of my equation, this whole thing, is equal to the left-hand side, but it's not. Right, we figured out that this would be the next term, but that this is the expansion of our current sum. So i equals 0. Now we're going to go to n plus 2, because we're adding one more. And this is going to be our old sum up to n plus 1 of i factorial plus this last value that we discovered. Like that. So this is how we would add. This is the term we would add, and this is how we would add it on to the end of the sum. Now, in a question, I might ask you, what would be the term that we would add out to the end? Or what would the sum look like after we had a term added a term? That would be this. Right? So this is I may ask different parts of this, but this is the entire equation. It's right here. So this question is similar, except instead of adding a term to the end, we're gonna add a term be to the beginning of the sum. So again, first step, expand. So let's write this out. We start at k equals 0. 0 plus 1 over 2. 1 plus 1 over 2. All the way up. And notice we end at n plus 1. So I'm going to have n plus 1 over 2. That's not our final term. Our final term is going to be n plus 1 plus 1 over 2. So this is our expanded sum. And now we want to add a term to the beginning. So what would that be? So here we started at 0. So adding a term... The beginning would be um, k equals negative 1, right? We have to go one further back. We currently go from 0 to n plus 1. Now we're going to go from negative 1 to n plus 1. So what would that term be? Well, that would be negative 1 plus 1 over 2, which is going to be 0. But what we can do is we can write our new sequence, our new sum. Now notice we're not adding anything to the end, so we keep our upper bound the same, n plus 1. But we're putting our beginning instead of at 0, we're going 1 back, which is negative 1. And we're going to say this equals our new term plus our old sum. And what's interesting is since we're adding a 0, we could really say that these two sums are the same because this cancels out. So now we can talk about removing a term, what's wrong with this, from the end of our summation. Again, still, we're going to expand. Okay, Always the first step in these. Now notice we start at 1 and we go to n. So this is going to be 1 over 1 squared. It's 1 over 2 squared plus... 
1 over 3 squared plus dot dot dot. And I really like to write at least two terms at the end. So our max is going to be n. We're going to so we're going to have 1 over n minus 1 squared plus 1 over n squared, our maximum. Now we want to remove a term. That means we're going to be removing this one. So what we can do is now I can, I need to figure out what's left. This is going to be a sum. We still start at 1, but now we only go to n minus 1 of 1 over i squared. So we can rewrite this entire summation as our slightly smaller sum plus this last term. Right. So again, this is the entire uh, equation. I might ask you what is the la what is the term that we pulled off? That would be that. Or what is the resulting sum after we pull a term off? Term off. That would be that. Or just to pull a term off and give me the result, which is this entire thing. Okay, let's remove a term from the end of this summation. First thing we do, expand. So I'm going to rewrite this. We start at 1, go to n. So it's 1 minus 5 plus 2 minus 5 plus, let's do n minus 1 minus 5 plus and minus 5. So that's expanded. Now we want to remove a term, which means we're going to be removing this term. So let's figure out how we could rewrite this part. This is going to be j equals 1, except now we are ending at n minus 1, j minus 5. So we can rewrite our whole summation. as the sum from j equals 1 to n minus 1 of j minus 5 plus this last term, n minus 5. And now we're going to do one last example. Here we're going to remove a term, but this time it's going to be at the beginning of the sum. Once again, expand. You're going to get tired of me saying that, but it's really the key to success in these. So this is going to be 3 to the 1 plus 3 squared plus 3, 3. And I'm going to do 3 to the n minus 1 plus 3 to the n. So there's my entire sequence. Now, here I want to remove the first term. So this is the one I want to remove. So what I can do is I'm going to figure out what this is. Well, here where we start changes because we're no longer starting at 1. That's this term. Instead, we want to start at 2. But we're still going to the same endpoint, which is n of 3 to the k. So we can rewrite this whole thing as k equals 1 to n of 3 to the k is going to equal 3 plus, right, that's that term, plus this term. So we've pulled a term, so 
is the term we pulled off of the beginning. And what we're left with is the remaining sum.